what are REST APIs and how they are versioned. Let's find out how to answer this question in a technical interview. To begin with, what are REST APIs? The term REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Web services that adhere to the REST architectural standards are called RESTful APIs. The REST APIs have a base URI, a media type, and standard HTTP methods. Furthermore, REST is the most widely adopted way of implementing APIs throughout the software industry. The next question that comes is, why do you need versioning? The simple answer to that question is, you need to version the APIs whenever you make breaking changes. For example, you might change request parameters. You might change the fields in the response. So in all those cases, you might have to version the APIs so your existing clients do not break. So ideally, you can create a newer version while keeping the older version intact. If you are okay maintaining multiple versions for the lifetime, then you can keep them. Or if you want all your clients to move to the newer version, you can mark the older version as deprecated. That way, your clients are informed that this older version is gonna get stop support from you in some future date. So ideally, all your clients should have moved to the newer version before you stop supporting the older version. The next question is, how do you version the REST APIs? There are various ways in which you can version the REST APIs. Let's look at four such major ways. The first technique is called URI versioning. Under this technique, the version number is mentioned as part of the URI itself. As you can see, for a sample URL, the first version will look something like slash API slash v1 slash users. And then the version 2 will look like slash API slash v2 slash users. This technique is the most common way of versioning APIs throughout the software industry. The next technique is called versioning using query string. Under this technique, the version number is passed as a query string parameter. As you can see, like version 1, the URL looks something like slash API slash users followed by question mark v is equal to 1 or question mark v is equal to 2 for version 2. The next technique is called version header. Under this technique, the URLs look the same in both the cases. However, the request header changes. In the request header, you will pass in a key value pair. In our case, I'm using the key as API version and the value represents the version number of the API. And then the fourth technique is called versioning using media type header. This technique is similar to the previous technique of versioning using version header in the way that URLs will look the same across multiple versions. The only thing that changes here is again the request header. In this technique, we use the existing request header called content type. Content type represents the format in which the client is expecting the data. As you can see, we append the version number to the value of the content type itself. For version one, we said v is equal to one, for version 2, we said v is equal to 2. So these were the four major ways of versioning REST APIs. There are a couple of other ways too, like domain versioning or date versioning, but they are very, very uncommon in the industry. So we really don't need to cover them as part of this video. However, I will mention them in my blog post, so feel free to check them out. Next. I will recommend you to implement the different versioning techniques on your own. 
unless and until you don't implement it on your own and play around with these different versioning techniques, you will not get a hang of the REST APIs. I'll be posting the GitHub link to the actual working code for all the four techniques that we just discussed in the video description. All my code samples are built using latest .NET Core. If you are able to explain these techniques in a technical interview and have a good discussion on how to implement them with the interviewer, then I would say that you have successfully answered the interview question. I'll be posting more such interview questions and their answers in my upcoming videos. So please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, happy coding.